Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and welcome back to the second game of the Performer Pal Zodiac vs. Wind Witch Invoked Artifact match. Uh, basically, I got shafted game one because I went second, and like I said in that video, it's almost impossible for me to win this matchup going second, especially considering that these are unsighted matches. I literally have to open God, and my opponent has to open almost nothing. Um, <laughs> even like if he opens almost nothing he could still have a sanctum or a barrier or a strike or any combination of two and shut me out um, so like that's just the problem but anyway so my opening hand is decent um, it was like one card away from being absolutely amazing like if it was a sorcerer instead of that joker if it was a terraforming instead of any of the other cards that wasn't rat and abductor if it was barrage instead of tinky there were multiple different ways that like the hand was one card off from being absolutely insane and I just find it I found it really ridiculous that that's the that was the case and the fact that I drew the Dragoons of Draconia here was even more crippling because of the fact that I could make Emerald here but I have to use one of the Dryden materials to pop my tanky so that I have three monsters engraved because of the fact that I can't detach the rat from the bullhorn to search the Dragoons so I just don't get a free card out of the equation um, and I have to pop the Tenki in order for me to basically be able to even resolve the Emerald. And I've got Ghost Ogre in my hand, which is a hand trap. It is a defensive card, which is kind of like alright and kind of decent until you factor in the fact that I'm playing against Wind Witch Invoked Artifact, which Ghost Ogre has very few good applications against that deck. It's definitely one of the cards that gets sided out instantly against the matchup because of the fact that you can't hit Magical Meltdown with it. You can hit a Laster with it, but what good is that going to do? They can banish from Graveyard. The only real cards you can hit with it that are actually impactful are things like Ice Bell uh, using its uh, burn damage effect, Glass Bell doing a search, or uh, Winter Bell, the level 7 Synchro, trying to burn if your opponent gets greedy. Like That's like a really good implication, like interaction because then it just leaves Snow Bell on the board and all they can do is fuse into uh, Raijin because they've restricted themselves with the... Uh, with the Ice Bell uh, restriction on the card that Special Summons itself. But, like, Ghost Ogre just has so few applications against this deck, and you can use it on the fusions, but that usually involves you having to either have a card Book of Moon, which means it's not a resource for the rest of your turn unless you have some weird thing you can use it with, some very niche thing, or you have to use a, a card to get negated by Makaba. <laughs> so it just ultimately isn't, isn't ideal in any way, shape, or form. But so, as you see, my turn was very meek in terms of what it allowed me to do. Off the Emerald, I drew a Max C, which was pretty good and pretty cool. But like I said, literally any one other card in my hand of the literal, like, dozens of cards in my main deck that could have been played uh, would have made my hand absolutely insane. Now, the deck list that you're going to see at the end of the last game video for the match is going to show you there's two Barrage and two Tinky in it. And you may think, well, of course, you have no right to complain that you drew Tinky instead of Barrage. But the reason I'm playing with this list as is is because that's the list that I played at the Knoxville Regional this past Saturday. Uh, and at, in terms of when this video was uploaded, the previous Saturday before this video was uploaded, I played in a Knoxville Regional and did relatively well with the deck. I unfortunately got just kind of dicked over the last two rounds and did not get a top eight slot. Uh, but the deck operated very well. And I was playing two Barrage, two Tinky in that list. And the reason was because I could not get my hands on a third Barrage in time for the event. If I was playing this deck at literally any other event, that I'm probably going to play the deck at, there would definitely be three Barrage in my main deck, no questions asked, because that card bypasses your normal summon. Although that's not really too relevant, it is relevant in hands where you draw Tanky Joker, like I have here. But so, I go use my uh, Emerald, and he strikes it straight away, and so from here, I'm really just kind of wondering what that other set could be, but because I've got Terra Top, and I do have a Joker that I can normal summon, and he has just paid 1500 and he does max see me, I just decided to go straight into the Totem Bird. If it's something like a Mirror Force or Dimensional Barrier, then the Totem Bird is just going to be absolutely like game ending here. Because even though he has me under Max C, I'm very capable of just ending the game on my own terms on this game, on this turn. Because my Magical Abductor has two counters on it, so off of my Skullcrabat Joker, I'm able to search a high scale in the form of Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon, get the third counter on my Abductor. And then as long as he doesn't have Ghost Ogre here, it's just game for me because I can search literally any monster in my deck that has a thousand or more attack and just have a game. And so as you can see, I'm moving my mouse around in the, in the uh, game video where I'm just doing some head calculations for math and find out that if I pendle the Dragoons and then the monsters I have on board, that's, I believe I remember the number being 5,500, which means that I'm a thousand off game. 
So if I'm capable of Pendulum Summoning here and that card literally has to be Strike for him to win this game, then I just win the game on the spot with my Pendulum Summoned monsters because I'm able to go, you know, into my Pendulum Sorcerer, I'm able to search a Turtle Lizard Draw, power into my deck a little bit further, even if it wasn't game this turn. But this is game on board through, like, a Mirror Force, if that was the card that was down. It's still game even if Totem Bird detaches both materials and negates because it would be at 1600 and with everything but Totem Bird, he would be left at 1400. So, ultimately, I'm just able to get the game from here. And uh, it just, it's, it's not just, it's... It's kind of unfortunate that I'm not able to show this deck off in like how it's actually meant to be functioning because the games that I do go first, I'm literally one card away from uh, from doing things and in the games, the rest of this match at least, I'm going second against literally what I've made very clear at this point, or at least I think is clear, is my worst matchup. But anyway, going into game three, game three will be a separate video. Like I said, these videos are going to be single games and shorter so they're easier to digest, easier for people to watch, and more likely for people to watch them. But the link to game three is on the screen or in the description, whatever you choose to prefer to use. But other than that, hope to see you around for game three. Let me know what your questions, like thoughts, concerns, and all that stuff are in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that nonsense. Patreon link is in the description. Check out Second Chance Gaming if you want to buy some cards, buy or sell, and you want to support the channel indirectly because they are a sponsor of this channel. But other than that, see you in the next video if that's something you want to go check out. Take care, guys.